how do we prioritize prayer? Martin Luther, the great reformer, said, I have so much to do each day that I must start with three hours in prayer. Well, you might not start with three hours, but listen to what Martin Luther is saying. He's saying, God's called me to a great purpose. I've got stuff that he wants me to do, and I need God to accomplish the purpose. So I must start in prayer because prayer fuels me to accomplish my purpose each day. We tend to think prayer is a task I must do to prove to God that I like him or that I'm committed or that I'm a good Christian. But if you can have that consistent time with God and it strengthens you, it renews you so that you can fulfill what God's called you to do, then prayer will be an avenue of delight rather than duty. (laughs) Hebrews 12 uh, says that, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders us and the sin that so easily entangles. So I like to think of that where he's, the author of Hebrews says, it's not just the sin, it, it's, it's and the sin, which means that there are some things that are not sin that can entangle you. So those can be good things that are distractions. So they're not bad things, but if they keep you from accomplishing your purpose because you're not spending time in prayer, you're not much with God, so you don't even have the strength to accomplish your purpose, then those good things become distractions that you've got to delete so you can be with God. I think those can be good things. I think those can be things like friends, social media, Netflix, ESPN.com. There's a whole lot of things that are competing for your affections and your time. But to prioritize prayer, you're going to have to even make a list of things that you choose not to do in order to create space for prayer. So think of not just creating a daily to-do list, but maybe even making a not-to-do list. Because I'm going to put my time with God, my prayer time first. I want to be with God first. One of my heroes is Dick Eastman. And Dick Eastman has spent an hour alone with God every day without missing a day for over 40 years. And he's come and spoke at our church. And we love Dick Eastman. But Dick Eastman would take time and open up his Bible, spend time in prayer... And the Bible that he used every day in his hour of prayer without missing a day in 40 years started to get so worn that he wanted to have it refinished. And he took it in and the young lady there said, "Uh, Sir, it'll take three weeks to have it rebound and given back to you. And he said, no, I, I can't wait that long. And she said, well, when would you like to have it back? And he said, I'd like to have it back tomorrow. And she said, sir... There's no chance we can have it back to you tomorrow. And he looked at her, and this man who uses this Bible as a a way to spend time with God each day, it's the Bible that was marked up, highlighted. He loved that Bible. He looked at her, and I was thinking about that he has so many friends that would pay a big price for a boat, pay a big price for a house. Here he is in his mid-70s. Maybe this is when you travel the world or when you eat well. And in his retirement, he looked at this young lady and he said, I'll pay any price to have that Bible tomorrow. And he had it back. Here's my point. It was a value system where that time alone with God was of such high priority that he, even to the point of wanting that paper Bible, said, I want it. You and I would say, hey, just open up an app. (laughs) Use an electronic Bible. Use a different Bible. But here's this guy that prioritizes prayer and hasn't missed time alone with God in over 40 years. And just that little component of that Bible was a big deal. He said, I'll pay any price. What will you pay any price for? What is the thing that's currently compelling you? I want to invite you to prioritize prayer in such a way that it's something that even like Martin Luther, you might say, I must start my day in prayer.